In this video, we'll discuss three questions on quadratic number patterns. In our first question, we have 1, 5, 11, 19 is a quadratic number pattern. And we are asked to determine the fifth term in the pattern. To get the fifth term, we can see that we are continuously increasing by 2, so I need to add 10. So the fifth term is 29. Our second question is to derive a formula for the nth term. This is also known as the general term. So in order to find the nth term, we need to find the first differences and the second differences. So in order to find the first differences, it is 5 minus 1, which is 4 then 11 minus 5, which is 6, and then 19 minus 11, which is 8. Now this is called our first differences. And then we need to do that again. So we have 6 minus 4, which is 2, and then 8 minus 6, which is 2. Now you would have learned that 2a is equal to 2, 3a plus b is equals to 4, and a plus b plus c is equal to 1. So now I can solve the values of a, b, and c. So 2a is equals to 2, therefore a is equal to 1. Then 3a plus b is equal to 4, that means 3 times 1 plus b is equal to 4, therefore b is also equal to 1. Then a plus b plus c is equal to 1, that is 1 plus 1 plus c is equal to 1, therefore c is equal to negative 1. Therefore, the general term is a n square plus b n plus c and I substitute a b and c with the values which we have found so it's n square plus n minus 1. Our next question is what is the hundredth term in the pattern? So what I need to do is replace n with 100 in this formula. So it's t100 is equals to a hundred squared plus 100 minus 1. So that is 10,100 minus 1. So it's 10,099. Our second question is consider the pattern 3a. 10, B, and 21. It says the number pattern has a constant second difference of 1. Determine the values of A and B. So in order to find A and B, let us start with a pattern. So it is 3, A, 10, B, and 21. Now we are given information that the second difference is equal to 1. So let us find the first difference and then the second difference. So it's a minus 3, then 10 minus a. Next we have b minus 10. And lastly we have 21 minus b. Now this is our first differences. And we are going to do that again in order to find our second differences. So now we have 10 minus a minus a minus 3. Notice I'm using a bracket because I need to subtract a minus 3 from 10 minus a. That is, so that will become 10 minus minus 3, which is 13. Then a minus a is negative 2a. Next we have b minus 10 minus 10 minus a. 
that's b minus 10 minus 10 minus a. Notice I'm using brackets again. So that will become b plus a minus 20. And lastly, we have 21 minus b minus b minus 10. So that will become 21 plus 10, which is 31, minus minus b, which is minus 2b. Now we know that this is the second differences and that the second differences is equal to 1. So 13 minus 2a is equal to 1 and 31 minus 2b is equal to 1. And that is enough information to help us solve a and b. So negative 2a is 1 minus 13, which is negative 12. So therefore a is equal to 6. And then negative 2b is equal to negative 30. Therefore, b is equal to 15. In our next question, it says determine the nth term in the pattern. So we have solved a and b. So the pattern is 3, then a is equal to 6. 10, b is equal to 15, and then 21. Now we can find the first differences, which is 6 minus 3, that is 3. Then 10 minus 6, which is 4. 15 minus 10, which is 5. And 21 minus 15, which is 6. And then our second differences, we have 4 minus 3, which is 1. 5 minus 4, which is 1 and 6 minus 5, which is 1. Therefore, 2a is equal to 1. That makes a equal to a half. 3a plus b is equal to 3. So it is 3 times a half plus b equal to 3. Therefore, b is equal to 1 and a half. Then a plus b plus c is equal to 3. So a half plus 1 and a half plus c is equal to 3. Therefore c is equal to 1. Therefore tn is equal to a half n squared plus 1 and a half n plus 1. So now we have proven that Tn is equal to a half n squared plus one and a half n plus one. And our next question is an interesting question. It says, hence, prove that the sum of any two consecutive numbers in the pattern equals a square number. So what we need to prove is that Tn plus Tn plus one, which is the next number after Tn, is a square number. So Tn can be written as a half n square plus one and a half n plus one. And Tn plus one, which is the next term of the Tn, can be written as a half n plus one squared plus one and a half n plus one plus one. So here we have two consecutive terms added up to each other. Now we could remove the brackets and multiply out where necessary. So we would have a half n square plus one and a half n plus one plus a half n squared plus 2n plus 1, which is n plus 1 squared out, which will become n squared plus 2n plus 1, plus 1 and a half n 
and I'm multiplying out with 1 as well. So that is plus 1 and a half plus 1. Now what we can do is add up like terms and remove this bracket. So here we have a half n square and then we have one and a half n plus one and a half n so that is three n and then one plus one plus one and a half which is three and a half and now we multiply out. That is plus a half n square plus n plus a half. And again, I'll add up like terms. So a half n square plus a half n square is n square. 3n plus n is plus 4n. And 3 and a half plus a half is plus 4. Now what I can do to prove that this is a square number is to factorize. And if I factorize this trinomial, I can see that it's n plus 2 and n plus 2. And because the bracket is the same, it is n plus 2 squared. So regardless of what n is and which the next term is, the sum of two consecutive terms would be a number squared.